a lot of us don't have the luxury, especially as sculptors, to have that daily studio process. We have a lot of orchestration to do before we can get to the point to do the making. Right. And so that, uh, the studio does reintroduce that introspective, meditative sort of state to where you can begin to look at those things. I, I found it very similar, and after 25 years of just doing big pieces, right. that I really missed the kind of that intense study yeah. or, or, or right. fast movement of, of developing yeah. something. And I also missed the dialogue, which was surprising yeah. to me of the right. gallery itself. I think that's what's so exciting about the new body of, your, of work that you're doing now, is that it reintroduced that introspective sort of uh, search for that, that element that, had, that really began in the early work. These new works have an almost Paleolithic tool element, which is pre-architecture. And it goes beyond architecture now, this new work, to the earliest sources of tactability, to material, to place, to placement. My work was so focused on Judeo-Christian kind of tradition of right. some sort. And it took me many years to kind of get that off my back. Right. The underlying essence of what all that work was about, I'm still totally connected to. It was always kind of culture and nature. Right. Uh, the balance between those two. But now I've been able to, and it's kind of a liberation, to use, as you say, this kind of natural material, which can go prehistoric, prehistory, yeah. but also can allude to history and things like that. All these things are natural stone objects that have broken off a mountain, right. been carried by glacier millions of years, deposited at the moraine, washed with yeah. waves and sand yeah. and, and shaped. And, and by looking and picking up these things, some really relate to history, right. Asian history, Western history, but also that Paleolithic quality. Yeah. And so it's nature, but still when you blow it up or make it, it has that kind of cultural re reverence. Yes. So you can play with culture in that. But another thing I think of is I was focused on European kind of tradition, where we came from, right. which wasn't here. And now with these stones, it's like focusing, it's American. Yeah. You know, America is like the Grand Canyon, the American kind of reverent space or mystical yeah. space or right. whatever you want it, but overwhelming yeah. awe of scale and mass. Right. Also politically or economically, it's such a pure, it's almost like uh, art povera, mm -hmm. that all these things are can be incredibly classic and, and sophisticated, but it's just made totally by ice and sand and water. Mm -hmm. But now with these pieces, you want to be in a physical proximity to the work. You want to physically well, sense the density of the object. And it is real. It's not even the alchemy anymore. Yeah. It, the, the alchemy that happened in that rock happened millions and millions yes. of years ago and when these things came up. This kind of the, the, that's the psychological so the, baggage. And the sense of time the in these yes. is an enormous sense of time. Yeah. It's interesting, this new work, leaving the city, took a long time yeah. to unload the city, right. leaving in a sense the South Fork, right. the Hamptons, and coming to Shelter Island kind of isolated me more. Right. And up came again this whole new body of work, which is kind of a continuum of all right. the information. However, it's very much like me going to New York for the first time uh -huh. and coming to Soho, where you have these kind of ideas, you're not really sure at that point yeah. quite what they are, but people are react to them and you react yeah. to it. It has yeah. so much potential of going this way or that yeah. way. So I feel kind of lucky in a sense, to be developing this this new vocabulary. All of our all of your experiences, psychological, scientific, and your education, make your form language viable. M remaining an artist is the hard part. Philip Guston was totally accepted as an abstract painter, and then stopped being an abstract painter, and then did these almost cartoon-like paintings, right. but the painting still had all that he'd learned in abstract and color and, mm -hmm. and, and quality and everything. Or uh, Sonny Rollins, who was very hip saxophone player, right. and then, you know, famous, and then dropped out of the jazz world and was playing underneath the Williamsburg Bridge, kind of a religious kind of thing right. and a reaction to commercialism in, his, in the music business. And then he came back with a whole uh, new sound. You're lucky 
in a career if yeah. you can do that. Louise Bourgeois, who didn't, who made work, showed, but no one really took seriously right. until her 65. Now she's in her 90s, still making incredible right. work.